Hi, I'm Adam P. Kennedy. Welcome to our first episode of the Leadership Series. The Leadership Series interviews highly successful men and women talking about their leadership style and the impact it has on their organization. This is the Black Experience for all. Welcome to the Leadership Series. I'm Adam P. Kennedy. In this episode, we're talking to General William Ward, a 40-year Army veteran and former commander of the United States Africa Command. In this episode, we're talking his champions and his leadership style. General Ward, were there mentors and champions that saw something special in you who believed that you could do more? But we had a, a had an officer that looked at me and saw something in me and he put something in the scenario that said Kip Ward is a guy that you might want to consider coming here. And he was a white officer, uh, Waldo Freeman. And uh, Waldo Freeman had been the executive officer in the, in the unit that I had commanded my company uh, in Korea, a West Point graduate who went ahead and, uh, and put my name in the hopper, so to speak, for someone to go to West Point and teach. So, and I didn't know that at the time. He didn't tell me that at the time. And then while at Morgan as a cadet, I had a captain uh, there uh, who's a white captain, uh, Nicholas Lagatuda, who also, uh, again, it goes back to someone who's paying attention to you. You may know it, you may not know it, but they're paying attention to you because they see something in you that's for them will add value to our society if this thing is cultivated, natured, uh, nurtured, nurtured, and, uh, and promoted. And so they were, for me, uh, uh, Nick, Nick Lagatuda, Waldo Freeman, and then subsequent to that, uh, there have been others uh, uh, for me uh, in my military career uh, that have done things that I know that but for, what their, but for their advocacy, other things may not have happened. But I will also say, conversely, there have been so those who've done things to, for, that they didn't help a lot. The good news is there were enough of those who did things that did help that not just balanced it out, but in fact overshadowed uh, those that uh, weren't as, I would say, as, as gracious. So tell me about your leadership skills. You go on to have a phenomenal career, but at this stage, what was your leadership like? And who influenced you, sir? Or was there anyone that you were trying to emulate? You know, frankly, uh, I don't think I ever tried to emulate someone else. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the good news, I have received enough positive reinforcement of, of who I was that allowed me to know that uh, what I was doing made sense. If I say, it, now, there were certain traits and characteristics that have been instilled upon me. And again, I, I mentioned I got that from my father. I mean, I just I just watched my dad treat people with respect and dignity and candidly, even when I saw him not receiving it. Because I mentioned I did so much as a young guy, I would be, I'd be with him on these odd jobs that I would see him doing. And uh, and but I would never see him retaliate or or whatnot. I just saw him treating people. And so the golden rule was always there. You just treat people the way you would want to be treated. You treat people the right way. And uh, and even if you don't get it back in return, uh, that's okay. You just treat people the way you, that you would like to be treated. You follow the golden rule. And I tried to make that my practice, my habit, who I was throughout my career. And it didn't matter where I was, what rank I held, uh, every formation, uh, someone there, were, they, they were important to me, and I tried to let them know that and do things in ways that they knew that it was genuine. Uh, uh, their being there, doing a job for the team mattered. I would, my leadership philosophy reinforced that. I would say it doesn't matter what you do. If you're here on this team, you're here for a purpose, to help this team succeed. And so, therefore, you know, I value your participation. I value your being here. And I would, and that's something that was always part of my leadership style. Also, with that, 
you know, taking action. I mean, you do things to make something make something happen in a positive way. But if you're taking care of your people and, they, and, your, and your people know that, they know that you don't consider yourself any better than they are. They're just as important to the team as you are uh, because you respect them for who they are and what they do. It really leads to performance that it's really beyond what it might otherwise be. I can recall being in an outfit whereby uh, some of my colleagues at the at the if the commander wasn't around, well, okay, well, the boss is gone. We can kind of slough off. That That was the exact opposite for me. I didn't want anything to happen negative or to go wrong while the commander wasn't around because I don't want to, didn't want to let him down. And you create that same spirit, if you will, among your team by, 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 by treating them in ways that they know that you really care about them. So even if you're not there, they don't want to let you down. They don't want to let you down. They're going to do their job and do it to the very best of their ability. And that's all that you can ask. And so, and that's what I try to instill as, as in my leadership approach to every formation, every command uh, that I had uh, so that even if I'm not there, my teammates know what the mission is. They know what the job is and they're doing their best to get the job done for the team because they don't want to let not just the boss down, but they don't want to let their teammates down either. Is there any kind of difference or nuances between being a company commander in Korea and teaching cadets? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, 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 there's an experience factor to be sure. Uh, the, the, there's a motivational factor, uh, you know, that you have, uh, and so you have a different mindset of who you of of, of of the team, the team that you're with. The basic notion of getting a job done, achieving, certainly is there. But you have a, a, a difference in so far as what the mission is. And so, and so given what the mission is, you relay things in a different way. But when it comes to motivating people to do their best, uh, things are so, so similar, uh, so, so similar. And it, a lot of it is revolves around the basic thing of letting folks know that they matter, what they do matters, how they perform matters, and you care about them as individuals. And when those things are going on, those are the basics and they, they kind of, that, that kind of happens. That happens to be sure. And it, 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 being a cadet, I mean, I do it to these days as I, as I mentor young ROTC cadets, high school students, uh, those are the same, uh, be it there, being with some senior officer in, in a formation, being with some civilian in some huge corporation. I mean, it's the same. What you do matters, and I care about you, and I'm going to do all that I can to cause you to be a success. Those are basic, basic, basic tenets of any successful leader or organization. Thank you, General Ward. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and talking to you during this episode. General Ward was the first commander of AFRICOM. As a longtime family friend who served on the board of my father's nonprofit, AfriCare, General Ward has had a distinguished and remarkable career, and it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to him and get his insights on leadership and mentors. Thank you very much. I'm Adam P. Kennedy. This is the Black Experience for all.